Yo, everybody. Craig here. <laughs> what? No cloud of smoke comes out of your face this time? What am I, like some kind of crazy guy? <clears throat> anyway. Um, gotta, always got to play a little music in the background. A little Hoover Phonic. Okay. I just saw the Joker movie. Technically, I saw it on Saturday morning. And it is now Monday morning. I just watched Halcyon's video about it. It was almost a half an hour long. And while I was watching his video, the Halcyon show, please go watch his videos about the Joker movie because I think they're great. I think he has great opinions. Um, maybe I slightly dis or just have a slightly different opinion just here and there, but it's just, it is not often enough to be like, oh, we're yeah, man. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was a great movie. I really did. From the fucking start of it, I thought it was a great movie. One of the first things I remembered about it was that the first time he gives his card to somebody and it kind of does a close up on the card and it like scans over a line or something. And one of the things on there is neurological disability. What can I say? Now, look, I don't laugh when I'm anxious or crying, but I have epilepsy out of nowhere, any day, any, any minute I could just go away. I could just completely have a seizure and not know anything for a while. It's a neurological disorder. If we lived at the same time and had the same, you know, I mean, we could have gone, been going to the same facility because when I go to the, the hospital, there's a neurological department, you know? We would have both been going to a neurological department, but I know, whatever, I'm, maybe it's a stretch. Anyway, I like how creepy he is when he's not really even trying to be. Um, and most of that is because of the laugh, you know, when he's laughing, when he's sad or very, very anxious or very, very nervous or something, he starts to cry. And by crying, I mean laughing. Now, yeah, I will admit too that does almost become a little annoying because it almost sounds fake to me personally. But here's my second thing that I really connect to it. I had and still have a very loud and obnoxious laugh. As a child, several teachers throughout several grades and principals from two different schools were telling me and threatening me detention, threatening me being held back because of my laugh. Just because of my laugh. Because things that I thought were funny, nobody else thought was funny, I was laughing too. And I was not laughing when the rest of the class was laughing. So most of my loud laughs were things that not a lot of other people thought were funny or almost nobody else thought was funny. And that's kind of a second connection is that's what he tells that counselor at one point. That's what the Joker tells the counselor at one point is that everything I think is funny, nobody else thinks is funny. You know, what I think is bad, everybody else thinks is good. Um, I'm right fucking there. I'm right fucking there with him on that emotion. It is just, when he said those words, something like that, the Joker said something like that to the therapist and I was just in the theater, I'm like, I'm him. Like, we have so much in common. So he's imagining that woman for a while too and I really, really, really thought she was gonna end up being Harley Quinn. I really, really thought so. I didn't know how, but I just, I saw her in the commercials, you know, the ads, the trailers or whatever, and I was like, she's gonna be Harley Quinn. Something's gonna happen, she's gonna be Harley Quinn. They're gonna, they're, he's gonna kidnap her somehow, or he'll kill her somehow, and then raise the child like he was Rose, like he was risen, how, like he was raised, sorry, three times. Yeah, like he was raised so that, you know, the daughter's like this chained up, super thin, and then eventually over time of that, she almost gets like what he got with his mom, you know, where he's taking care of her constantly and all that stuff, but it'll be just slightly different because the daughter will, you know, not actually be his daughter, even though he'll probably lie to her and say, yes, I had it on your father. And But I think the whole Harley Quinn thing was the... Uh, Oh, God, I had even, 
not Schenectady. The syndrome, something, whatever, syndrome where you like are held hostage or something and then you want to be with the person holding you hostage. Like you either want to be with them mentally, sexually, or just a partner of them somehow. I, I love that character in the cartoon. I have a little thing of her up there. Yeah, I fucking loved her in the cartoon. I loved her voice. I, I loved her style. I loved her butt. She's got a cute little butt. Oh, yeah. And I liked her big fucking hammer. But she was in that more recent movie about the Suicide Squad, you know, the character, Harley Quinn. But none of that ever happened. None of that ever happened. So I was totally wrong on that theory. I really admit that I really thought for sure so anyway um, his first murders were self defense he was trying to defend a woman who was getting harassed by three drunk guys by just being like hey stop it or hey you know let's do something else or whatever he said he wasn't like threatening them with anything he didn't pull out his gun when they were doing that to the woman. And then he starts crying, and then they start singing, send in the clowns to him in a sad, dramatic way. They start, send in the clown, and they're all drunk and stuff, and then they start beating the shit out of him. And he had just gotten the shit beaten out of him by children not too long ago in the movie. I mean, at the very beginning, I mean. Bam. So yeah, he shoots him. And then, he's not a good shot. He's never shot a gun before, I don't think. I mean, even when it shoots off in the hospital, he's, you know, scared and nervous for a second and kind of chases it, you know. He's he's not a gun expert, so the shot to the leg was not on purpose. Um, it was just him shooting in that direction before he got through the door, and that's just the only place he hit him. Because he was also on the floor. I, I remember some things very well, some things not so well. So yeah, <sighs> there's that. And then he chases him down because he doesn't want a witness. That That's the only reason he chases him down, because he doesn't want a guy, drunk or not, to, to be able to say, yeah, it was this guy in a clown costume, in a clown outfit with this, with this revolver, and, and he just didn't want the cops to hear about him again. He didn't want the fucking... He didn't want anybody to hear about him again. And I think maybe he eventually liked it. Maybe he eventually liked that he killed somebody. But I think at first, yeah, it was more about fear. And I also think they never showed him reload. And he shot more than six times with a, with a you know six-shooter. I'm almost positive he shot more than six times. And they never showed him reload. So I heard a theory that this could all have been a dream of his. It could all be like the very similar things with him being with that chick at certain places. And then later in the movie, they show those same scenes with him being alone. Like she wasn't really there. So I get that. This whole, in, in, in fact, let me just skip to the end real quick. The end is him walking out of the counselor's room, who I think is the same counselor from earlier. I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, he walks out of the counselor's room, and you can see that he's, every step he takes, he's leaving a red footprint, so he must have just done something very bloody in there. Uh, yeah. And then he goes down the hall, and he starts getting chased, and it's in slightly like, like slow motion as the end is coming up. And the end, the end looks like it did maybe in, like, um the Golden Brick Road, you know, that movie with the fucking... Is that Alice in Wonderland? With the Tin Man and the Scarecrow? You know, doesn't that movie end with a very similar the end, where it's like big cursive letters and like almost the whole screen is the end, and it, and it was in like kind of a bright orange-ish, maybe dark yellow-ish and maybe that does imply that it was all just a dream. Maybe that does imply that he was in that place the entire time and everything he had done was just bullshit. But then why would he kill her then? You know, why wouldn't he have killed her? I don't know. But yeah, at the very end, he's like running down the hall slowly and guys are chasing him. And then he runs down the other way and they're still chasing him. It's a funny little ending to a Joker movie. 
he just murdered somebody and they're chasing him, but it's it's almost like a cartoon where you, you go no no then they follow you and then you come back at the same hall and they're still behind you like where did they it, it's funny to me okay so let me uh, talk about the counselor I think the counselor he had I think that okay I think this all started in about 1968 because there was an actual New York City garbage strike in 1968 in real life so I really think that that had something to do with this movie I don't think they ever said what year it was or if they did, it was in very fine print somewhere on some paper that I didn't see. But later on, when I got home, I'm like, I just Googled <laughs> New York garbage strike. And yeah. So that made me think too, really quick. I'll just say it real quick, as quick as I can. I'm very sorry. I just had to, th I was thinking so much during this movie because I just related so much to him. And I've been a big Batman movie fan since 89, since I was a little child. Yes, I would have been, in 89, I would have been six years old. Okay, so, that was one of my favorite movies as a child. Anyway, he's got to be what? When, when the Joker meets him at Wayne's Matter, Manor and, and has the nose on and the wand, um, he's got to be like, what, between 8, 10, maybe 12, you know, the oldest, maybe, he, he's somewhere in that range. It's 1968, 20 years from now, or 21 years from then, he would be in, like, very late 20s, early 30s which would be like the perfect time to be like the strongest you can the richest you can to have established yourself really well as mr wayne and then to finally be like okay it's time for it's time for me to start kicking some ass around this town start solving some crimes you know i i don't know it was just a theory of mine that it was like a nice little wink to the audience anybody who had seen the original ones hey this might be I, and I know that the Joker story would be completely different. I'm not saying it's a connection, like it's a prequel to the to the 89 Batman. I'm not trying to say that at all. I was just trying to think that it was maybe just a tiny wink to the audience. Like, hey, you guys remember that 89 Batman? Maybe he's the, maybe this is how old that guy was. Whatever. Anyway, god damn, this is already 12, over 12 minutes long, about 13 minutes long. I'm very sorry. Nobody's going to watch this. I know that. Or at least not the whole thing, but I appreciate it if, if you do. Let's see, anything else I wanted to talk about? Um, one weird thing to me was when he was kind of planning his strategy for The Tonight Show. And hey, come on. If anybody's ever watched an episode of The Tonight Show from anywhere from the 60s, early 70s, they had the same curtains, a very similar type of song. I mean, it wasn't the same song whatsoever, but they had a song... He mentions different times that he's going to have a veterinarian on, or you know, he's going to have a weird guest on, and that happened a lot back then. The whole musical thing, the band playing and everything, that happened. I mean, it was almost exactly like The Tonight Show. Uh, way before Jay Leno. <laughs> okay, so here's some... <laughs> My laugh shouldn't be louder. I'm still, there's still this old thing that's like, you have to hold it back. You have to hold it back. You're going to get in trouble. And I really just, I want to fucking laugh like I should. Like, I should just fucking laugh like I want to. Like, I should. Like, it just comes out. Oh, it was so fucking awesome to hear him laugh, even though he was crying. But it made me feel like that's, real quick, even though nobody's still watching at this point. Um, there's a, a guy, a member of Red Letter Media, Rich Evans. He has the laugh that I should have. Nobody must have told him to, to shut up as a child. because, Or he was just strong enough to be like, no, fuck you. I'm going to keep laughing how it feels like I should laugh. Yeah, you hear his laugh a lot in the vids they make when they're watching a video. And I definitely recommend that channel because they're fucking hilarious. And hey, we live in the same state, so... Anyway... Great movie, almost 15, over 15 minutes now. Of my, I don't think I've ever made a video this long. Um, very good movie. I, I think it's the same counselor that he was seeing earlier in the movie. Um, if you look closely, I was looking, I mean, the, through the whole movie, I was looking as closely as I could. I, I was really trying to focus as hard as I could. And I know my memory can suck. I know that. 
there's just some things, sometimes, I guess I have to be really into them, or I fucking remember them. Anyway, so, when you've seen that counselor before, they both have more like black hair. You know, they both have just plain colored hair. It's not gray yet. She has an afro, okay? Then later, to me, and hey, I'm not trying to be the racist guy, all of the race doesn't look the same to me. Not all Asians look the same. Not all black people look the same. You know, to me anyway. I think everybody looks different, and I can notice differences in people's faces. So for me personally, I really, really, really thought that was the same counselor that he was seeing back in the day. They both had gray hair now, and she had a completely different hairstyle. It wasn't the 60s anymore, the, you know, early 70s, there was no more froze. No more froze allowed. <laughs> Unless you were in the funk. All right, so, um, yeah, almost, yeah, this is too long, I know. My opinions about this is, I felt like him so much. I really did. I know that there's tons of differences. I was raised by a, a mother alone. My father, you know, killed himself when I was two. Um, but she never abused me. Yeah. You know? Um, he's thinner than fuck. I'm a fat, big piece of shiza. You know? Um, he wants to make people laugh. Like, he, he was being a clown to try to bring peace and joy to the world. A, he wasn't trying to be part of the protest, and B, he wasn't like... Oh, well, also, he, I think he was trying to be a stand-up comedian, and that was kind of how he was starting, and trying to be able to talk to people in public without being so nervous. I think that's kind of what the clowning part was about. Plus, to just have a fucking job. But then, yeah, he couldn't even do stand-up, and uh, I have that same dream, too, where for a while in my 20s, I really, really, really wanted to be a stand-up I've even got a couple of videos on this shitty channel. Me trying stand-up jokes that I made. It fucking sucks. I, and I know that that takes practice. I know that takes years of practice to become fucking George Clinton. Or George Clinton, Jesus Christ. Um, why am I forgetting his name now? Fucking A. I saw him three times in my life. Or twice, I'm sorry. Or, like, Bill Hicks, you know. And who the fuck is like that anyway these days? George Carlin. Sorry. Yeah, so it was a great movie. It was a great movie. Very, very, very great movie. I would recommend it. I was laughing when nobody else was laughing, and I was sad when nobody else was sad. I, I related to him so much. Um, I really, really fucking did, and it's like, finally, to me it felt like finally they've made a movie where this weird, creepy guy is the star, and not only that, because I'm pretty sure that kind of movie has been made before. I mean, The Shining, the original Shining, you know, he, he might not have been weird and creepy at the beginning, but I think towards the end he was going insane. It's called Cabin Fever. So, yeah. Um, not much else to say. About 20 minutes long now. Nobody's going to watch this. It's cool. I figured I would add this anyway, because what's the fucking difference? Um, I'm thinking about just kind of... I'll still be around YouTube, but I, I don't think I'll be making videos as much anymore. Um... It's nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault but mine. It's good Led Zeppelin song. Um, I'm not blaming anybody. It's not about like, oh, I don't get enough views. I don't get enough likes. I don't know. It's not a fucking sympathy thing. It's not a crying thing. I am more than grateful for what I've gotten, from what I've received. In fact, right now, it's like, basically, I know we're only acquaintances, but the people I chat to on YouTube, you're like my friends. Literally. I mean... I still have a phone number in real life, but I always feel like I'm bugging them. Because I told them I would set them free, and then all of a sudden I start bugging them again. What am I, an asshole? Yeah. 
I'm a fucking weird and creepy asshole. I fucking want things that nobody else wants all the fucking time. I say things that I think are funny and people look at me uncomfortably like, what did you just say that? Things that I seem to like and love at grocery stores and on TV shows, anywhere, all of a sudden they'll be gone. And, and not sold out gone, just like they be off the shelf all of a sudden. That happens to me all over the place, constantly. And I'm not trying to like say, oh, because of that I'm the Joker. It's nothing like that. I'm just saying, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done trying to relate. What the fuck, man? And I, I know I don't do everything that I should on YouTube. I don't, I don't even do tags anymore. You know, I, I know I could fight harder, make this better. Maybe more people would subscribe. Maybe more people would watch. But uh, to me, it just feels like I would have done that if things would have gotten crazier, you know? If I would have exploded a tiny bit, I definitely would have tried to get better. To me, this all started as, hey, look at all this shit I can do on my iPad. And then with a couple of button pushes, bam, it's internationally watchable. And I can say anything I want. I can talk about whatever the fuck I want. I can use swears and I can blah, 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 blah. But what the fuck am I doing these days? These days, I'm, I'm not doing skits anymore. I'm not, I'm not making people laugh anymore. I'm just ranting and raving about shit hardly anybody else cares about anyway. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for comments to be like, Oh, man, you need to keep rocking. Oh, you need to do this. Oh, that's another thing. I know I always say keep rocking to people. Is that lame? Is that, is that lame? It's, it's my way of trying to say, I really like your channel, and I wish you would just keep doing what you're doing. In, in two words, it, it's it's a nice. Anyway, anyway, I'll go fuck myself. Um, just in case, my birthday is this month. On the nineteenth, Saturday. A couple of weeks from now. Maybe I'll make one last video then. And I'll say happy birthday to myself. I'll sing it. I'll sing it myself. And then I'll slip my wrist and shoot my head off, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be fucking cool? Why am I the only one that thinks like that? Okay, I think about suicide every day. And I don't think of it as like, wait, 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 I'm so sad I need to die. No. My thought of it is so logical. It is so fucking logical. It is so fucking like, if I just did this, so many people in my life, not only people that know me, I'm talking about people that are like around me, family, family, and my girlfriend, they would just be set free. They would just be fucking set free. They'd be set free of so much shit from me. So much shit. And I'm not talking about violence or anger or any. I'm just talking about bills, cigarettes, you know, clothes. Things you can't buy when you don't have a job. Like I'm still 12 years old, you know? Out of nowhere. I was living my life good. Great job at a fucking head slash porn shop. I was loving my life. They were even really... I'm not, I'm not trying to lie or get any credit. They were really considering me for assistant manager, or at least training me for that. They thought I was doing a great job. They loved me there. I loved the porn. I loved selling weird porn to, to weird I loved it. It was me. Not necessarily that I like weird porn, but maybe I do. I like incest, so it makes me weird. But when other people would buy weird, weird, weird porn, I, I would never laugh at them. I would never like ask them what this is about. I would always have a very simple smile you know, never like, <laughs> no, just a very, yes, no problem, sir, no problem, ma'am, here you go, you know, or somebody wanted to buy a big giant bong or a pipe or whatever the fuck, I was fine with all of that, it was all so fucking cool, but then no, I have a fucking seizure there and crack my head open, I think it was on this side, not, not the side I have the big scar on, but this side, and we just, said, okay, maybe you should stop working. And I was like, okay, I think I agree. So why not just fucking disappear? Why not just be dead? Why not just be gone? Anyway, this is almost 30 minutes now. Yeah, I can definitely go fuck myself. Um, I'm going to say it one more time, just for the record. You can go fuck yourself too. Anytime you want, just do it, okay? Just do it. Don't, don't ever let anybody tell you you can't go fuck yourself, okay? It's a freedom. It's an American and worldwide freedom that you can always go fuck yourself. 
always, and I can always go fuck myself. I'm a proud member of Go Fuck Yourself International, which I just created. One member, me. And my cock. Anyway, peace.